Hi guys, my name is Barradante and welcome back to Overpain. Today's patient is Savvy Vamp. Hi Savvy Vamp. Hello Boro, I've recently become a fan of yours and this will be my first submission to Overpain. I'm relatively new to doing digital art myself and know I probably need a lot of improvements. This fella here is Ink a Deathclaw from the Fallout games that I made into a Dungeons & Dragons character. Uh-huh. He was originally supposed to have battle scars, but I like the way he turned out anyway. One of his horns is broken and a few of his spikes are chipped, but he's still beautiful. I agree. Any tips or tricks with digital art painting are appreciated since I'm still new and learning the ropes. Ropes? Thank you for doing what you do and being awesome. Alright, let's see what we can do. So, overall I really like the design, the character looks pretty cool, but the fact that, like there's this thing that many concept artists say when they describe the way they want to push their artwork, selling it. They say selling your artwork. Concept artist's job is creating the concept, so other artists could use it and make a good piece of whatever. So it's just about showing the idea precisely and just the way it's needed to be shown to other artists or riggers or whoever they would be in the production pipeline. But that's all great when you're already working on the project, when you already got the job. And before you convince the actual management or whoever, the client, that your concept is actually worth using, you need to show it in a better light. Not just as an idea of the design, but actually show how this character is going to look awesome in a final product. So that's where it becomes a lot more complicated. You need to actually create a beautiful illustration of your concept. In this case, we have a good concept, but it's not an impressive illustration. It's a flat pose, like the character is just looking sideways, like it's very two-dimensional. The lighting is flat, I'm not impressed. There is no mood. This character could be just a doll on a shelf, it would look the same, like there's no meaning to it, it doesn't look like a giant freaking monster. So let's fix that, let's remember some of the movie style poses and angles and lighting to present this monster the way that it would look really cool. So the thing I saw right away as I was thinking like how do I make this more impressive it was about making the pose a bit like this, so this is the tail, and this is the head, and this is the shoulder line. So we're actually seeing the character from the back. Something like this. This seems to be a bit more interesting. Maybe turn the torso a bit more, meaning this arm will be overlapping the torso like this, so we would see a bit more of the face. And also, while we're at it, let's think a little bit on the lighting. So, overall, our plan on how to light this character would be probably like this. So, the right side with this cool silhouette of this arm, it will be like dark. And this part will be the brightest. And of course we may add some rim light here, but that's not necessary of course. We could do the rim light on this side actually. That may look interesting and it would be like here as well. Something different, to have just this strong, very black outline on the right side without making it more complicated because there's no need for that. We have like no background and I chose to just keep it this way since this is concept art. Let's just call it that. So yeah, that's the guy. That's uh, the way we're gonna change him. Of course, I won't be able to add all these details back because this is ridiculously precise. That's the thing. Stuff I mentioned in the previous video about thumbnailing your artwork. 
The details are cool, they're actually interesting to look at. These dinosaur-like patterns, they're really awesome looking. And they're obviously the result of a lot of work put to it. But at this distance, I don't see those details. What I see is a very boring, flat, dark shape on a brown background. Like, I'm not gonna click on this, so I won't see all of this ever. So it's always, no matter what kind of image you're working on, it should work from a distance. So let's have this guy on the side. I could look up the Fallout character specifically as a reference, but honestly I don't think that's necessary because, as Savvy Vamp said, this is a Dungeons & Dragons adaptation of this character, so that part shouldn't be fixed. This is your own concept of this character, like a special version of it. So I'm gonna be using Savvy Vamp's original artwork as the reference. By the way, this is not really an overpaint then. I'm starting over. Wow, this is trippy. So I'm definitely giving up this brown background. I haven't seen a single awesome concept art that is on this kind of heavy, choking, dense brown background. It's weird, like what kind of mood is this supposed to bring? Where this character could be that overall it would be like this brown ambience. So I say, since the guy is like black pretty much, we should make the background cold. That will make the whole dark gray color of the guy shift to a slightly colder gamma. So it won't be just dark gray, it will be dark blue a little bit. So it already will be something more interesting to look at. And this main light source from the front like this, this light will be a bit warm. So we will have a nice transition from cold to warm, from dark to bright. Will look pretty cool, I think. So let's start implementing these ideas and see what happens. Usually in a concept art, by the way, I keep saying concept art, there is no indication that Savvy Vamp meant this to be the actual concept art. Obviously, like, as they said, they're a beginner, and when you're a beginner, you don't really find, you don't really distinguish. Like, there's no real difference for you between a cool concept art and actual illustration. It's all just awesome looking artwork with characters and whatever. But there's like a big difference in the way like what are you going for when you're working on this. So I'm saying concept art in this sense because the idea of this artwork was to create an interesting new take on the design of this character from one universe and apply it to another universe. So this is the definition of concept art, like this is one of the way to apply this genre. And yeah, I was going to say, in concept art, there's always um, several tricks they're using, because they don't need to invent all kinds of different ways to present a character, like mysterious character like this, funny character like this, special angles, special tricks to show whatever they need to show the best way. The same way always works if that's the same direction they want to take. And one of the tricks, they always make the further two limbs, the further leg and the further arm, in like noticeable, not crazy, but sometimes even kind of crazy air perspective. So in this case, you see if the back is actually like black and the tail is too, we can see where exactly the tail is ending and where the further arm and the further leg start. So in most cases, this is like the same way they do it always. Really cool trick. A lot of the times I apply it in uh, actual illustration.
getting some hint on this texture. I don't think I'll manage to make it actually look the same. Let's rotate this arm a little bit to have a cooler silhouette. So I'm showing pretty much all of the texture by just making some dents in this rim light or the silhouette like I'm showing these dents over here. And this is the hard part like actual rendering because we have the proper three-dimensional lighting. So this was a little bit of work and everything else is a very flat outlining really. Like in here, I'll add the same kind of dents and a few separate spots like that. There we go. Could add a little bit of maybe this kind of action and erase it around the character. and add another layer and only erase it from the limbs that are in the front. So yeah, this is what we got. As you can see, putting the actual details that you already know how to draw, but at a certain angle and applying actual three-dimensional lighting to it is exactly the set of tools that you need to sell your concept. So yeah, pretty much you gotta learn how to draw well in order to get a good job even if you're like a concept artist. And how to make the detail well and overall work on the design. Savvy Vamp, you got that covered obviously. At least for now, you really should make sure you push yourself to visualize your ideas but at an angle to go three-dimensionally, not flat. Like everything is like sideways on this picture. Even though the second leg is at an angle and the face is slightly rotated. But those are the easy things. The overall rotation is complex. And that's where you can really play with the pose, with the angles, with the lighting. And get yourself a much more impressive look. So yeah, that's what I have to say for today. Um, turned out to be kind of a weird overpain. I hope that was helpful. Kind of literally just painted my own version of it. But that's the point. You have to like start with thinking what's the mood, what's the meaning of this character. Because right now on this guy, I see no meaning. He's like just there. And this guy is big trouble and you can read it right away. And that's quite important. More important than the details. On that note, thank you Savvy Vamp for your submission. Always wanted to do an episode on concept art and how to apply it, how to make it more impressive. If any of you guys want me to paint over or repaint if I want to your artwork like this, the link to my Patreon page is in the end of this video. You become my patron, submit the picture and write a message. I read the message and overpaint the picture. But for now, I thank you for watching if you did. I guess I did if you're here. Leave a like and subscribe, tell a friend. Turn around. Do whatever you want and I will see you in the next one. Bye! Really turned out very cinematic, like now this is adaptation not to Dungeons and Dragons but Jurassic Park probably?